Good day, and thanks for joining us as we talk about the anticholinergic agents. Atropine is an intramuscular or intravenous anticholinergic agent, and hyoscyamine is a sublingual or oral, normally taken sublingually or orally, and it is also an anticholinergic agent. So these are anticholinergic agents, or against the acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system. By saying that it's an anticholinergic agent, we're going to basically allow the sympathetic nervous system to dominate. Atropine is mostly used to inhibit the vagal response in the heart, meaning that it treats bradycardia. And hyoscyamine is more specifically acting in the GI tract, and it's going to treat things like peptic ulcer, irritable bowel syndrome, and other gastrointestinal tract disorders. Let's find a little bit more about the actions of these drugs. Atropine and hyoscyamine are competitive antagonists of the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors types M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5. So atropine competitively blocks the acetylcholine receptors in the entire parasympathetic nervous system. Another way to look at that is that atropine and hyoscyamine allow the sympathetic nervous system to dominate. And the way to remember the actions and side effects of atropine and hyoscyamine is to remember what the sympathetic nervous system does. And in the eye, these drugs will dilate the pupils. And what is dilating the pupils do? It actually lets more light into the eye. And sometimes we don't need that light because it's already bright outside. So photosensitivity is a side effect of these drugs. In the heart, it's going to increase the firing of the sinoatrial node and the conduction through the atrial ventricular nodes of the heart. And that's going to allow the increased activity of the heart. And by doing so, they're going to increase the heart rate and increase the conduction velocity. And although we would be able to predict most of the side effects of the anticholinergic agents by knowing the actions of the parasympathetic nervous system, we wouldn't be able to guess this one. Atropine treats bradycardia, or slow heart rate, in emergency settings. So it increases the heart rate, but it's got this paradoxical heart rate slowing when it's given in really low doses. We don't understand that effect, but it's important to know that. Also, atropine is used in uh, certain conditions where an antidote for nerve gas is necessary. So some nerve gases are acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, and atropine is actually used in those cases. Finally, hyoscyamine is a less frequently used medication for treating bradycardia. Its primary use is in the GIT disorders, the gastrointestinal tract disorders, and uh, what hyoscyamine does is it actually uh, decreases the motility of the gastrointestinal tract. It decreases the secretions of the gastrointestinal tract. So it's really good in conditions where there's some sort of a spasm. So if there's, um, for instance, a diverticulitis, if there's a irritable bowel syndrome or peptic ulcers, and other types of uh, GIT disorders where there is spasm. And it's also used to decrease mucus secretions in people who are in palliative care. Now you understand that atropine is an intramuscular or intravenous anticholinergic agent. 
and hyoscyamine is normally a sublingual or orally administered anticholinergic agent. Being an anticholinergic agent, they allow the sympathetic nervous system to dominate, and therefore they're useful in con treating conditions such as bradycardia, in conditions such as a spasm of the GIT, and they're also used topically to dilate the pupils. When trying to remember the effects and side effects of anticholinergic agents, remember that those agents allow the sympathetic nervous system to dominate. Use that knowledge of the sympathetic nervous system actions to predict those side effects. And now you know. Thanks for joining me.